Over the past years, I have seen more and more that the greatest need is education and medical care. The government recognizes that. Everybody is so positive towards I improving the lifestyle and the culture of the Bushmen that they're very supportive of giving them education and medical care. Therefore, my dream is to establish a station basically designed for the whole Bushman tribe in the Kalahari Desert, in which we will have a large property where we're going to build the hospital, we're going to build the school, the first academy for Bushman children from grade 1 to 12, then a post-high school uh, education possibility for them to go into practical skills in which we will teach them to install water systems, to farm the land, to improve their lives and the lives of the people around them. In August 2009, Pilgrim Relief Society launched the Omatako Development Project. The monumental undertaking is being implemented within the Kalahari Game Reserve on a 5,000 hectare property leased to Pilgrim Relief Society by the Namibian government. The project aims to help the bushmen in their transition from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle by introducing sustainable sources of income, services and education in the community. The property will house a number of facilities, including a boarding school with a capacity for 500 children, a hospital of 30 beds, timber and metal workshops, garages, a bakery, stables and agriculture farms. Several buildings uh, are going to be together in the form of a hexagon here. Uh, we're going to have the school on one side, we're going to have the dormitories for the girls and the boys on each side. We're going to have the cafeteria on the northwest side and we're going to have the gym, the sports uh, hall on the southeast side. So uh, uh, we're going to have around 500 children going to school here. Um, and right under the hill, we're going to have the medical department with the dental, um, TB ward, um, maternity ward, operating theater, and so forth. Uh, so all of this valley is going to be used for uh, education and medical, medical care for the, for the sand people and everybody else that lives around here. By the time this campus and the medical department and the farming department are going to be finished, I estimate around 500 jobs that are going to be created here just from the local uh, population. In the, in the western Chumque, uh, we can, uh, it can benefit about up to 5,000 inhabitants in our area here. So the whole area here, they will benefit from our service. What we here see is a future school, the Gelände of a school. We are in this area of the school. And until now we have the corners of the school and the main axes und haben angefangen mit dem Ausheben der Gräben für die Fundamente. If I employ one bushman, he feeds his own, his own village, his entire village. So somebody that comes here and asks for employment, that's going to feed their three children and the wife, and most probably their village of about 20 to 30 people. So when I have 50 people employed, you're looking at, at an approximate uh, 500 people that are eating from that employment. If you have 500 jobs offered, you're going to have close to 5,000 people that are uh, offered food because of this, which is about the population of this area around us. Uh, right now, Pilgrim Society is the biggest employer of this area. By the time this campus and the medical department and the farming department are going to be finished, I estimate around 500 jobs that are going to be created here just from the local uh, population. In that community, it's a godsend. Omataku, the people who live there are very far from anything, and it's a very poor community and the schools only go up to primary level, which is grade seven, which means after grade seven, the children have to go to schools either in Sumque, Grootfontein, or even further afield, which is okay if you have transport, if you have money, but for parents who have literally nothing, it, it must be a nightmare. So if we can bring the school to the community, then it's a wonderful thing. And because it's not only a school, because it's a health facility as well, because there's community training involved, it will just uplift the whole community. And I can see it becoming a hub of activity in that community and creating jobs and just giving people pride in who they are, where they are, and showing the world what they are and what their worth is. Arita Kumet,
A lot of the new parents that have children that are, say, under five years old, they are really struggling to basically keep their family alive. As we're going through, we see that as in some places, half a family will die from really silly things. They're cold infections, uh, lack of food. Things that, before I even came here, I didn't think were an issue, and these people, have come to the conclusion that they can't, as much as they want to keep their traditions, they have to look after their children. This little one and her family have uh, travelled from Kanofle. It's a village about about 17 kilometres away from here. Whenever they need to come here for medical assistance, it's always on foot. Um, and this little one, she walked 17 kilometers with um, elbow injury that's actually quite bad. We've organized for her to get a lift to Grootfontein Hospital so they can x-ray her arm and then do whatever is needed. <laughs> but the way I'm seeing this project, maybe in five years, that developed my son before. How can you are coming and, they are, and you know they are as a teacher? How can you come and tomorrow you as a doctor? How can you come tomorrow maybe you are know what is a mechanic? Yeah, this is why the things what the project do it. Yeah, I'm see this why I'm see it. It's, it's a project where that know my people. Tom is a little sand boy, one of our neighbors here. I met him in August 2009. I came from a village and uh, I was coming with the ATV and I see him on the road by himself, a very small sand boy, he was hitchhiking. And I stopped to ask him what, what's happening and he said, I'd like to come work for you in the camp. I, I took him with me. I had no idea why he wants to do that. The whole day he helped me plant olive trees in the orchard. I would plant them, he would come with the water and water, water them, and then we move to the next one. And once in a while I would ask him a question, then where is he from, how old is he, and so forth. In the evening, I told him, I'm going to take you home. I put him back on the ATV, I went home. When I went to his place, there were only two huts, two women and a lot of children, no men, in the village. And um, his mother was lying on a rug, covered by a blanket, and she couldn't stand up. So I asked Tame, what's wrong with his mom? And he said uh, she's uh, very sick. So I left Tame there, I drove back to the camp that evening, I brought my doctor from the camp. And the lady doctor that we had here from Belgium last year, she went there and she examined this woman for about an hour and a half. After examination, she said to me, Sebastian, this lady is perfectly healthy. She's dying of starvation, which shocked me. This young boy, 12 years old, would hitchhike to come to work in a foreign camp to make food for his family so his mother doesn't die. But the whole day, he never opened his mouth about this. He never said, I need food. My mother's dying. Please give me some food. He just worked for me in the hope that at the end of the day, I would give him something so he takes some food to his family. We managed to save the mother. The next day, Tame, I moved him to our, our kids here. And ever since he stays with us, he's one of our children. Through his tremendous resolve, Tame conquered my heart completely. He started a food program for all the six villages around us. That every week we take them food, we take them oil and maize and tea and sugar and uh, rice and so forth. So every week, these people have something to eat. Okay, so if somebody is very sick and needs to go to the hospital, you come tell us and we'll do what we can to help you to take you to the hospital. Okay, so consider us your friends. We are here to help you. Okay, okay. You boys play soccer?
We really need to instill in the son a sense of pride and a sense of accomplishment and a sense of I can do what you can do. I'm not um, inferior to anyone. And if we can do that, then I think the school and the project can sit back and say, yes, we've reached a goal. The Omotako Development Project advances as a direct result of ongoing support through donations and services. Without this support, these efforts to help the SAN community could not be realised. If you wish to donate or get involved, please visit our website. Your contribution can change lives.